Hello Linux fans, welcome to Linux Quest. Appreciate you watching. So today I've got my first look at Interagus or Interagas. I'm not sure of the pronunciation, so uh, help me out there if you know the uh, correct way to pronounce the name of this distribution. I'm just going to throw it right out here. I'm very impressed with uh, what I've seen here with the limited time. I installed this last night and got several applications set up and everything. I want to also say that this is the best GNOME experience that I have ever had on a distribution to date. So I'm glad that I chose the uh, GNOME desktop environment for this, which leads me to a couple of things I just want to talk about. Some of these are uh, somewhat unique. You, you don't see it often in distributions. And these are features that I think other developers should really kind of take a look at and, and see what uh, the team at Interagos is doing here because I'm impressed with it. Uh, a little history as I launch into this screen here. So Interagos is a Arch-based distribution. It is a rolling release, so you're going to get uh, newer software and features and things there as they come uh, quicker on a quicker release cycle. Um, I've also heard it said that uh, Interagus is really a uh, Arch installer, and, and for me it feels like a distribution, not just an Arch installer, and I'll go through some of those reasons why. So once you boot up into the live environment, you're going to be presented with a little icon pop-up in your uh, network manager icon that says in order to install, uh, you should have an internet connection. And the reason I think for that is, is because you have some options during the install process. Now this is something that I absolutely love. And I've seen this before, uh, so it's not new, but I like their implementation. Uh, and you have a choice of desktop environments during the install. So Cinnamon down to XFCE. Now for this install, I chose GNOME, and I'm really glad that I did. Again, it's been a very, very good GNOME experience for me, and I'm not a, a typically a GNOME user. So uh, once you've stepped through that, uh, oh, and other advantages to this, if you're a distro hopper like myself and you enjoy trying different desktop environments, so on and so forth, especially with a rolling release, then I've got one ISO on a USB that I can carry around with me and, you know, on at, at any given time, hey, I want to try a new desktop here and uh, bam, there it is. So, you know, awesome to see this. Um, the other thing that I was really impressed with and surprised to see was you have a list, and I pulled this image from the web here, you have a list of various um, features and software that you can toggle on or off. So for example, I was able to toggle on Flash Player, turn off LibreOffice because I wanted to install WPS Office, which uh, runs great on this, by the way. Uh, you could also toggle on or off the AUR, and I'll talk more about that in just a minute. So really what this, um, this made me feel like as I was going through the install process and, you know, it, it, to me, I think the user, you are going to feel like you're customizing this for yourself somewhat. So, you know, that you're going to have your own unique in install. And, you know, that's a big part of what Linux is about is, is choice. So, uh, thrilled to see this there. And again, I think other developers should kind of kind of take a look at what they're doing here. So, great work. The other thing I want to point out to uh, to kind of lean me towards thinking, hey, this is a distribution. This isn't just an Arch install. And that is the community behind Interagus. Uh, Interagas, Interagos. Um, so I want to go over to their main page on the website here. And they do a fantastic job with their website. Uh, if you go in to learn more, you kind of get uh, a, a quick and easy layout about, you know, what what is this distribution? What is this OS all about? But the other two areas I was really impressed with is if you go into blog, so I was able to find the latest by date, the latest ISO refresh and any notable changes. And if you just look at how easy and quickly I was able to find this information just with one click. So they've really paid attention to detail here, which lends me to think if they're paying attention to detail on their website, uh, you know, maybe they are in their distribution as well. Uh, and then if you go into community under forums, I was really, really impressed with how systematically they have laid out the various um, uh, forum topics here. So you have installation, newbie corner, application, so on and so forth. So it makes sense. Let's think about this. So first you've done the install, right? You're going to do that first. And so that's the first thing you see here is you're reading left to right. And then you've got it installed. You're messing around with it. And you've got a few questions because you're a newbie uh, to this OS. So that's what you see next. And then application desktop environments on, on down to kernel and hardware. And typically, uh, you know, those may be some of the things you get into uh, towards the end of exploring this OS. So, again, I think attention to detail here, and you look at the activity, it's very active. I think they've got a, a following here that's going to continue to grow. 
and uh, you know they're doing some things right here so uh, great work uh, team responsible for the website all right so uh, I want to say this again this is the best GNOME experience I have had to date with any Linux distribution now this is version 3.20.2 and I, I base that on a couple of things first of all again I'm not a big GNOME user uh, but this implementation with the Numix icon theme, and I think the Interagus team worked close with Numix here to uh, give you this really attractive uh, square Numix icon theme here. To me, it presents better than the default um, icon theme. But we all know looks aren't everything. You know, that's surface level stuff. The other thing I've experienced is this seems like the fastest GNOME experience I have had uh, yet to date. And that could be because of the point two release that um, you know maybe wasn't in place maybe it was a, a 3.20.1 release that I tried in the past now and this is hardware that I test most of my uh, different distributions on so you know you're talking four gigs of RAM that kind of thing and um, I want to also do another comparison here um, and this may ruffle some feathers I, I, I doubt it I mean it's not anything other than my experience so I was really blown away with the first time I tried tried Manjaro. Um, you know, I was blown away with the XFCE desktop implementation and how everything was, uh, you know, real cohesive look and everything. They've done an outstanding job with that OS. So what I'm about to say to you is really surprising me in the limited time that I have spent with Interagus. Um, I am more impressed with it first experience than I was Manjaro. And I'm surprised hearing myself say that. Now, there's also some other things I've discovered just in setting up software and things like that that uh, lend me to say that. And again, not trying to f start a distro war or anything crazy like that. Just just pointing out my observation. So, um, I went in and I set up the AUR through the Add and Remove software. This is uh, Pamac, I think. Uh, let's see here. Yep, Pamac uh, 4.1.5. Now, I thought initially during the setup process that I was turning on AUR, but actually I had to go into Preferences and, uh, you know, log in and turn that on. Now, for those of you not familiar with AUR or what that is, maybe this is your first time looking at an, at an Arch-based distribution, uh, AUR stands for Arch User Repository. And what that is, is that gives you access to software you may otherwise not find in the, in the standard or default add and remove software. Uh, list or group or file or whatever you want to call it repository um, and going back and thinking about my experience through the AUR with Manjaro there had been times not many but times where I knew that there was a package or a, a piece of software that was in the AUR I knew it was in there but I would go in to search for it and I would not find it through Manjaro and I've had a few instances where I would go in to install that package through the build process and I would have some kind of weird error. And uh, granted, it's easy to hit yes or hit no and then you think you're, you know, you think you're saying yes to an install when actually you're saying yes to a, a, a package edit. So I, I'm excluding that. I'm just talking about it gets through the process and then in the end, uh, you know, it errors out. And I'm talking about some of the same software that I have installed here in Interagos, which has installed flawlessly. The other thing I've noticed is the uh, speed with which uh, things pop up. So C-H-R-O-M-E. Um, so quickly that pulled up. I was able to find that and install that. And the other one that surprised me was in the past I've tried to install NSYNC, which is a Google uh, Drive client. Uh, and it may just be that NSYNC was not in the AUR three or four weeks ago when I was, uh, uh, you know, messing around with Manjaro. Uh, but at any rate, it was here this time and the install was flawless. So I, I bring that up and um, I just, uh, with the install process and the, um, the option to choose which, excuse me, which desktop during the install process, uh, the speed at which I'm running GNOME on this, and again, this is the same hardware that I uh, would ran Manjaro on, so it's not like I'm, you know, on a system tripling the RAM or anything crazy like that. Um, I'm I'm really really impressed. So um, I want to step through a few other things before I make kind of my final statement on this, which kind of surprises me. Um, you know, they had things turned on automatically like dash to dock settings, which, so that allowed me to go in and quickly 
uh, without a lot of setup time or anything like that, go in and set you know the uh, the dock to the bottom where I like it and behavior and things like that. The other thing that was nice was that they had um, let's go this route. They had um, Tweak Tool pre-installed, and so that again saved a lot of time. And there's your your Numix theme there that you see square. You've got light. Uh, standard default new mixed um, square light square dark I guess you would say um, under desktop you know you can toggle on or off and I'm not going to step through all of these uh, tweak tool settings uh, but you could turn the live environment for the desktop on or off there the but my point being here was that some of the extensions which are very uh, handy for me because I like to uh, I like to take gnome and make it a little closer to the mate experience you have through Ubuntu mate and so for for that I put an application launcher here and then a places launcher here and those were already uh, available within the extensions uh, by default so that was great to see and again it saved time um, there's one other that extension that I want to mention here uh, if you've experienced this so I installed evolution and just wanted to kind of check that out and when I did I noticed that the uh, the uh, spacing here at the top of the window was just overly large it was about double what you're seeing here from this line up and it was just a lot of wasted space and it looked odd and and I guess my OCD kicked in and I just I couldn't stand it just it's like you, you got to be kidding me why is that there um, so I <laughs> did a little research and found uh, a great extension here called pixel saver install that turned it on and it solved the problem and it doesn't seem to be affecting any of the other built-in apps negatively so uh, that's all good. So if you've had that same experience with various applications through the GNOME desktop environment, then I highly recommend trying Pixel Saver here and see if that takes care of it for you. So I wanted to mention that. Um, quickly, I'll go through kind of a list of applications. Just real, real briefly, you're going to find a lot of the uh, you know default GNOME desktop apps, photos, videos, things like that, maps, uh, the file manager, which I think there may have been a few improvements. Uh, the file manager is actually... I'm, I'm really coming around to this file manager. It's very nice. Um, but I installed a, a few apps. My own. So under Internet, uh, previously, I chose, you had the option to toggle on or off Chrome, Chromium. So I, I did. Then later, I uninstalled it. So I put Chrome and Oprah, Opera on there. Oprah, Opera. Um, <laughs> and and um, anyway, then uninstalled Chromium. And again, everything I've installed and uninstalled, it's just been flawless. Um, under Office, there was nothing because other than Evolution, well, no, I installed Evolution other than Contacts and Calendar, and I like that because, again, I was able to go in and put WPS on there and have one Office Suite as opposed to two and didn't have to waste time uninstalling something. Um, sound and video, again, most of your defaults. Pulse Audio Control was there. Uh, Brasario, Cheese. And then under Sundry, you see Adobe Flash Player because, again, that was one of the options I had during the install process. So, um, I'm going to sum this one up. This will be kind of quick. I've, I've spent limited time with this, so I cannot speak to the stability of the OS. I can speak to the speed. I can speak to the fact that I'm, again, really, really impressed with the uh, GNOME desktop environment here on this um, distribution. And I would say that if you are an Arch fan or you're looking for a new Arch distribution, give Interagus a, a, a look for sure. Put this high on your list because... As I said, I, I, I'm surprised to hear myself say this because I was so impressed with Manjaro. But if I decided that, hey, I want to run an Arch-based distro, um, you know, for my daily driver or for a set period of time, and I had my choice today, um, based on limited time here with Interagus, I would choose Interagus over Manjaro right now. And I may even go with the GNOME desktop just because my experience with it has been for whatever reason, so good here with um, with Interagus. And maybe it's that they had kind of everything set up and I was able to just quickly get it the way I like it with GNOME, which is closer to that Mate, uh, Mate, Mate <laughs> I cannot talk, to the Mate um, functions here with application lists, so on and so forth. So hope this helps and uh, certainly excited to kind of share this video. I was surprised and excited with what I found here and uh, so I'm glad I took a look at it and hopefully this this helps you as well. Alright that's it for now and thanks again for watching.